Hello and welcome to TidyX episode 161, TidyX's screencast where we go through and explain how our code works. My name's Ellis Hughes. Yeah, my name's Patrick Ward. Thanks for checking in at TidyX. As always, if you're watching on YouTube, down, uh, go ahead and go down to the like and subscribe button, drop comments down below. Always appreciate that. Uh, this week, we're continuing on with some shiny stuff. Two episodes ago, we uh, talked about Shiny Live. Last week, we talked about using Shiny and being able to uh, basically call the user uh, parameters from the URL. And this week, we're going to kind of walk through the early stages, initial deployment of a Shiny Live app. So remember, this is serverless Shiny. So we're actually not going to be um, having to run Shiny on our computer. We're actually just creating a Shiny uh, web app without a server that could in, it essentially be shared with anybody. Yeah, can run anywhere. You can send the URL to one of your collaborators and say, hey, check out this application. It's going to have this, informa uh, this information. You can upload, you know, whatever thing that they're investigating, and it'll run on their computer without them having to install R or Shiny because it's all fully in the browser. And I think that's really cool, but also note this, this technology is still very early stage. So of course, while we were working on it, we were sorting things out, learning things as we were going, spent a lot of time trying to get it going um, ahead of this recording, but it was, I think, very worth it and a, a lot of fun. So we're gonna take you through what we learned deploying a basic Shiny app using Shiny Live. So I'm going to scale us down a little bit so you can see that we did indeed deploy a Shiny app. You can look at this URL here. This is being run off of GitHub Pages. This is 100% being run in the browser. There is nothing running on my computer right now to run this app. In fact, because we're at the edit view, you can see the R session and the R information over here on the left. So it's actually running R in my browser. All the code that is used to run the, the Shiny application, as well as our actual application here. So you can see it's interactive. When you click things and update them, it's changing the actual Shiny app. It's, it's behaving like a Shiny app because it is. Um, mm -hmm. And so I thought this was really cool, and I wanted to take, a, take you through the examples of how we did this. So the first thing you want to look at or might want to look at is, well, when you're just curious about that, go to the source, go to the people that actually made this and see what they did. Um, so I went and looked at shinylive.io slash r slash examples. You, you have to go to r slash examples, otherwise it takes you to the Python version. Um, but this is posits serving of some Shiny apps that they've created using uh, Shiny Live and demoing how it works. And so you can kind of get an idea of like a highly optimized, this is an R, uh, a Shiny app that is built by the people that are building Shiny Live. So it's probably taking advantage of all the tip, the, the tricks. I mean, clearly the code itself isn't all that complicated because the idea is this is also just an intro to Shiny. Um, but you can kind of see, this is probably its best case scenario at this point, how quickly it runs, which, or uh, gets running, which is not the fastest, admittedly, but I think it's very cool. <laughs> Um, next one, uh, the next thing we did is I wanted to learn how to deploy the shiny app. And so Rami Crispin has put out some information. Let's see if my computer will let me scroll up. Um, it's looking like it's not, but yes. So Rami Crispin has a repo shiny live dash R where he takes you through how he's deployed a shiny live app. So I referenced this a fair amount as I was going. So I wanted to make sure to call that out so that you knew what to do. But now that we've talked a lot for the last few minutes, let's take you through the actual code to do this. So we've got this shiny app here and keen eyes may have noticed it looks very similar to last week's shiny app. And that's because functionally it is the same shiny app in the sense of the things that we're doing. Uh, unfortunately, right now we have turned off the uh, shiny querying at this point. I'm still learning, trying to figure out if you can do that in shiny live. Um, if there's any posit folks that know Shiny Live and are watching this and know if you can or cannot, please leave a comment down below. I'd like to, <laughs> I'd love to hear from y'all if we can or cannot do that. But let's take you, let's speed through the Shiny app so you know 
what what's going on to understand like this is just shiny uh patrick do you want to start us off yeah uh the first thing that you'll notice from episode 160 the difference here is we're not loading tidyverse um uh, because Shiny Live is going to load essentially all the packages and, and deploy everything that's in this code, Tidyverse, for those who have ever uh, installed it, takes a really long time to install just because of all of the packages and um, dependencies that it has. So we uh, effectively eliminated Tidyverse, and we're going to just be working in base R here. So we load Shiny, and then we load ggplot2 directly. Um, this stuff is just basically the same. We get empty cars, we get the car types, uh, which are the row names. We create a nice little data frame uh, with the information that we require, and we turn the SIL and the AM into factors. Great. Before that was all in one tidyverse kind of uh, code. Now it's just base R. Uh, the, the UI hasn't changed at all, really. Uh, everything here was base R before. It's all basic shiny stuff. So UI stays the same, uh, same as episode 160. The server, uh, we did remove, uh, as Ellis said, the, uh, uh, the option to create the URL queries, which was up there. We had a, we had a parse uh, query string um, function. And so that's that's obviously gone. Um, and then here, where we're getting the actual data that the, the user is defining, we're again, we're just using base R. So we're using the square brackets. We're defining the columns and the conditions within the rows of those columns that we would like to be met. In this case, it's whenever they input a specific cylinder and a specific uh, and a specific uh, uh, transmission, it's going to find those rows within those columns, and it's going to limit our data set to that. Perfect. Um, again, we are just using a ggplot, so we don't load all of tidyverse. We use the native pipes here so that nothing has to change. If we didn't want to use those, we could stick dat parentheses right inside of the ggplot and put a comma after that and, and get rid of the pipe and we're rolling. Same stuff, but um, the native pipes also work, uh, just really easy to use. So this looks exactly the same, just the different pipes uh, are there. And then same thing with the histogram. Um, different pipes are there. And then the uh, table, um, remember, was just the car type names. And so originally we would have had dat and then dollar sign car types, uh, or yeah, sorry, that's what we had. We had a dat with the, um, the pipes. We want to retain the uh, data frame component of this. So we call dat. Remember, it is reactive. So we have to have those little parentheses after it. And then we call the brackets and we say, hey, just grab that column called car types. And that's literally the shiny app. It's all the same stuff from 160. If you want to go through uh, more or you want to see how the parse query string works, that's definitely in there. And then once we've finished all the code for the shiny app, we just need to make sure that we also uh, call the app with the shiny app function and feed it the UI and the server. And we effectively want this entire app.r script to be pushed out to GitHub so that it can be run in a web browser for you. Yep, exactly. So yeah, we always will want our shiny app.r saved as app.r, very importantly, uh, returns just a shiny app object. Um, so the way, so we've made our shiny app, right? Kind of straightforward. It lives inside of the cars folder of our uh, repository that we're going to be pushing up to GitHub. But how do we convert that Shiny app into a Shiny Live application that we can then deploy for use? Um, well, the folks at Posit made it very simple in theory, where you use the Shiny Live package, colon, colon, export. You point to the directory that contains the application that you're wanting to convert into a Shiny Live uh, application. So in this situation, again, we have within app or cars, the cars folder, we have the app.r script, which is this guy here, um, and then a destitor, a destination directory. And since we're pushing up to GitHub and we want to be making uh, GitHub pages, um, the way we need to do that is we need to send it to uh, the docs folder. And this is a, a default in uh, GitHub where you can select either root or docs to be the location that you're publishing your uh, pages from uh, if you're not going to be doing like a GH pages branch we're not doing that so we're going to use docs now if you wanted so it's, it's it's actually crazy simple it's actually really fast too i was surprised how quickly i just ran that it's already done it's already converted it 
the first time you run this, it will need to download a couple assets um, just onto your computer. But again, very, very fast. I was very surprised at how quickly this was able to run. And then if we wanted to see what it looks like locally, we'd use the HTTPUV run static server function. This is from a version of HTTPUV that is uh, only on GitHub at this point, I believe Posit is going to be pushing this version to CRAN soon. Uh, but for now, I would suggest using the remotes install GitHub RStudio HTTPUV to install this. I'm also using the GitHub version of Shiny Live. I'm not using the CRAN version of Shiny Live. So that's why if you're trying to run the CRAN version, some of these arguments are a little bit different. So yeah, it, like I said, it's very early stage. This technology is very early. So things are changing and evolving. You kind of have to accept what's going on with that. So cool, now that we've got that um, application built, what we do now is we go into our terminal. You can see some of the past stuff that we'd run. Um, but you commit and add, or add, commit, and push all your updates to your repository that you're wanting to publish your Shiny Live app from. In this situation, the project is just in the repository is just tidyx shiny live underscore one, because uh, I wanted to differentiate it if we do any more in the future. But say now you've pushed it all up to, to GitHub and you've got your repository. How do you go and take your repository that has all the contents you know, that we just committed and pushed and turn that into an actual GitHub pages. Well, it's the same process for any GitHub pages that you might be doing. Um, so I figured we can take a moment here to talk you through that. So here's all our contents. This is, these are the same contents that are on our computer. The way that we turn this into a GitHub pages now is we click on settings. Then you click on pages. And it's gonna take you to a page that looks like this. Uh, I have it in dark mode, so sorry if it looks a little funny to you if you're used to working in light mode. Um, but there's build and deploy for GitHub pages. We're going to select deploy from branch, which is the default. You can deploy from GitHub Actions, but we're not going to be doing that. Then for the branch, make sure to select the main. By default, it's none. And then the location is docs. And that's what matches where we put our Shiny Live outputs to. Uh, in our in our repository. So if we go back to our um, Shiny Live here, all our the contents of our Shiny app that's Shiny Live is in docs. So now this is going to run an action. It's going to take a little bit of time to run, but it's going to build your website based on those files. And that is what we were looking at at the very beginning. It takes a few minutes for it to deploy, um, but that's just computers doing computer things and running in the background and doing your thing, you don't have to worry about that. And now anytime that you update your application, git add, git commit, git push to main, it's going to redeploy the Shiny app with the updates that you made to it. And so then it just behaves like any other Shiny application. It takes a bit to load, a bit of time to load, but you've got an application running in the browser. And I think that that as long as you keep that in mind that it does take some time to load, you can be prepared to do that and essentially plan on not refreshing it a lot. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. and, and having it run just as is in the, in the browser like that for you. So that's like a quick, quick and uh, efficient, hopefully, explanation of how you can take your Shiny application, turn it into a Shiny Live application, and then deploy it in GitHub Pages in just a matter of minutes. Patrick, mm -hmm. do you have anything else to add? No, I, I think like you said, uh, it's it's early days still. Things are consistently improving, and obviously, the more people use this and provide feedback, the faster some of those improvements can happen. Um, but you know, it. That being said, early days, uh, but it it is um, the possibilities are super exciting. Knowing that you're not going to have to rely on, you know, having a server to. You know, currently, if you make a shiny app that you want to put out to people, um, you could host it. You know, open for the world to see. But obviously, if you work in a business, um, that's not going to work. So. Um, 
you have to basically buy some server space or have some server space where you can then host these things. So uh, this gives you the option to create something that doesn't require that server that you can share out with your colleagues. Um, and so I think that, yeah, the op the opportunity is really cool, uh, but it is early days. So you just have to be patient and roll with things. Yeah, exactly. And it's what I like, what I was fun to some of you might have seen that too you can you can update your shiny app right here and click yeah. run it's actually very snappy once you've got it loaded for it to update very quickly um, as you edit your app so i think this is going to be the way that i would suggest people initially play around with it is in the edit yeah. view so we went to the uh repository location slash edit to be able to go into this view here and so with that that is episode 161 of tidy x where we show you how to deploy a Shiny Live application. Thank you all so much. As always, my name's Ellis Hughes, and you can find me on various social media sites at Ellis underscore Hughes. And my name is Patrick Ward. You can find me on X at, uh, at OSP Patrick at tidy underscore explained is where we both are on X. Uh, and then tidy.explained at gmail.com is where you can drop us an email. But as always, like and subscribe on the YouTube channel. Your comments down below make it a lot easier to get in touch with us. And if you feel like our work has in some way positively impacted yours, we do have a Patreon page and we're always really grateful for anything that you'd like to donate to the show. Thank you all so much and keep on exploring your world.